Hi, Mark Savage here with Aaron Skinner. We're in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona for the International Plastic Modeler Society USA National Convention. It is really, really steamy hot outside here, man. But we're gonna go inside where there's all sorts of cool stuff. The convention hall is two levels under the ground because it's in Phoenix and it's hot. We're gonna go right inside right now into the uh, contest room and see what's on the tables. Wowed as always by the variety and quality at the IPMS show, and being in Phoenix, the West Coast contingent was well represented. Overall, there were 424 entrants this year and 3,524 models on the tables. Not surprising that it was hard for us to decide which ones to take pictures of for the magazine and our fall annual special issue. But we did take a record for us, number of pictures, and talked to folks from all across North America, plus Argentina, Brazil, Switzerland, New Zealand and Mars. Well, not Mars. While folks wandered and made selections in the vendor hall, many more took notes in their own pictures of the models on the tables, and we chatted with a variety of modelers about their special builds. Here's California's Jim Fry with a particularly nice helicopter. Well, this is a, a large-scale helicopter, uh, one you don't see normal, uh, it's 135th scale. And it's a trumpeter kit. And uh, it is uh, one of the Russian color schemes that I really like. I think it really brings out the, the model. Uh, they're quite popular, used by many different countries, but uh, this particular one is uh, uh, used out in the desert as the desert scheme. I opened the uh, engines up. Uh, plumbed and wired them, added some cockpit detail, seat belts, uh, detailed the interior a little bit. Well, it probably took, uh, for me, a good about three months to build. Armida Pabdani came to Phoenix from San Diego to show her beautifully painted Gundam creation. So this is the Vincent Van Goof. It's based off of a 1-100 Goof model, and I, I do like a good pun. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a compilation of Van Gogh's life and works. It's got the damaged headpiece for his notorious in, uh, injury. It's got the Starry Night paint scheme, sunflower base, flocked in a, in a little gilded frame to kind of tie it all together. It was over the course of a month, you know, and then the deadline started approaching. So it took really a week on evenings. Uh, I redid one of the arms and the shoulders once and the backpack twice. I, I enjoy it. It's my debut piece for you here for Nationals. It's my first national. Everyone loves a B-17B with natural metal finish and California's Barry Webb showed us his stellar build. Uh, so it's, the, um, it's the Academy Minicraft B-17B and the finish is uh, of course Alclad. Alclad goes on pretty quick. The major the major challenge is the prep time. You have to be sure to, ha to have a very smooth finish. And so um, put a primer, I use a primer over it. I used uh, Model Master Gloss Black, um, which is, it, some sort of gloss black is essential for the, for the shiny owl clads. Um, I use the, the, metal, the Metal Master Paint, because Model Master Paint, because it covers any uh, green stuff filler that I might have had to use. On this airplane, there was very little. The fit was very nice on, on this model. Newlywed Clara Treem came from Tucson with a variety of World War I aircraft, including this gem. It took me a couple months, two or three months. Yeah. I detailed the interior with uh, aftermarket seat belts. I finished up the gauge there with um, brass wire and see-through plastic. Dressed up the interior a little bit. I've painted it to look weathered with uh, castor oil because these airplanes typically threw out a lot of castor oil during flight and so I stained it accordingly and chipped uh, the cowling to expose some of the aluminum with hairspray technique and um, I also hand painted the roundels with a mask. I try not to use decals as much as possible because they fight me all the time and I enjoy the rigging a lot. It's, a lot of people are intimidated by the rigging, but actually it's one of my favorite parts of the model. And then there's last year's big winner, David Falk from Wisconsin. Last year he created a stunning caterpillar construction piece, 
and this year turned his attention to a large military truck. Scratch building is his specialty. I started the project in 2011, and I usually have a, a few items going on the bench at the same time, and, and this truck shared components with the Diamond T that I had built. They both had the Hercules 529 cubic inch six cylinder engine, similar transmissions and axles, so I thought, well, we're already making a frame for one truck, we've got the dimensions, so let's make two different frames and start making identical components. The wheels are modified from the AMT aluminum style wheels. I strip the chrome, uh, plug all the holes, so I've got a, a blank that I can cut what I need for a, a genuine bud steel wheel military pattern. The tires are made out of a sandwich of acrylic and styrene that I can turn in the lathe to get the tire profile and then I wrap a tread pattern that I've cut by hand all the way around the tire. The steering wheel and the seat cushions were out of the parts box. We had a, a nice black and white clear overhead photo in our Army Motors magazine from the Mil Military Vehicle Club and it was kind of a long shot of about 25 or 30 of these tractor trailer combinations lined up on each side of a road overlooking where the Remagen bridgehead was during World War II. So they were, they were getting ready to build two separate pontoon bridges on either side of the Remagen bridge and it was a good thing they did because it, a few days later it collapsed completely. Variety and quality were stellar at this year's show. and We don't know how the judges could narrow it down to winners, but they did. So stay tuned for FSM's Look at the Winning Entries.